catch up. Right, attenuators have to fill, fulfill, in terms of design, three basic conditions. First of all, we need to have the correct input impedance. We'll look at it in detail, but the input impedance of the attenuator is the impedance that you would measure if you put an impedance meter on those terminals when the load is connected. More about that soon. So that's the first thing, and the reason why it's important to to have the right input impedance it's matched to the load uh, to the source you're going to connect it to. We're going to look at this in a minute so that you transfer the maximum power from the circuit source in the attenuator, the circuit connected to the attenuator, into the attenuator. So you transfer as much as power as possible by matching the input impedance. Secondly, it has to have an output impedance that matches the load you're going to connect to it. Again, for maximum power transfer. If you don't get the power transfers as close as possible to maximum, you won't get the desired attenuation right across the range of inputs. Think of the example of the 0 to 10 volt, reducing by half to 0 to 5 volts. You won't get, if, you, if you don't match the impedance as close as possible, your transfer won't be linear, it won't be exactly a half at every point in that 0 to 10 volt range. So you'll, you'll have issues there, okay? Also, if you, if you don't transfer all your power, you're going to lose more than half of your voltage because it's going to drop voltage over the, over the transfer, okay? But I always talk about it in terms of transfer and the maximum power, but it's about getting that consistent, I want 0 to 10 to go to 0 to 5. If you don't get that right, you won't get that. The third condition is the reason for use of per resistance only. Attenuators, circuits, only have per resistors because their value doesn't vary with frequency. An attenuator, we want to get this same level of attenuation regardless of the frequency of the input. So if we used capacitors, inductors, we'd effectively have an attenuator that varied its attenuation with frequency. We'd have a filter, which is n next week's lesson. Okay? So attenuators consists of resistor networks to other components. So they're quite simple in nature in terms of calculation technique. It don't include any kind of complex number work yeah. at all. Any questions so far? So, a little bit of a look at um, the importance of impedance matching. I want to take a five minutes with that circuit to calculate the power dissipated by the load resistor RL, RL what we've got here is a source this source is providing us with 20 volts and we're going to transfer as much power from that source to that resistor as possible get the maximum power output from that resistor where is it? I want you to calculate the power dissipated by RL, when it has a value of 48, 49, 50, 51, and 52 ohms, because of the closeness of those values, you're going to need to do the calculation all in one go. So, what I've done over here, we all know P is equal to I squared R. There. I've substituted in, I've said that I, for this circuit, is equal to the voltage divided by the two resistors added together, little r being the internal impedance of the source, big r being the RL load resistor, and then I've substituted that into that formula for r. So we've got a one-go calculation 
of power. Please edit that typo in my slide. Okay? So P is equal to E of a little r plus RL all squared times RL. So what I want to know are what is the power when RL is equal to 48 ohms, RL equals 49 ohms, RL 50 ohms, RL 51 ohms, and RL 52 ohms. So if we just quickly calculate those, We'll put the results in there. I'll pause for a minute. Well, we got what? What is it when our error is 48 ohms? Nine point seven. One point seven. One point nine 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 two. Then RL is forty nine. Nine 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 eight. One point nine 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 eight. When that's completeness. Yeah. And then nine nine eight. One point nine 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 eight. As you quite rightly say, from that, because we've gone very fine increments, and if we went, if we done it to enough decimal places and we only went 0.1 either side, we find that, and, and it wouldn't matter whether we, if we changed little r to 40, we'd find our maximum power would be when our L was 40. Maximum power transfer is when the load is the same impedance as the internal impedance of the source feeding it. Okay? And you won't be interested. Um, we've sort of finished all the maths, but I found this online piece of graphing software. I'm going to have to put Y in um, for the power. Equal to um, what do we have? Brackets, don't we? <coughs> 20 over. over. We're going to have to put brackets 50. Hang on. Now we'll make that we'll make that R, right? We'll make it little R, in fact. Um, plus RL. RL, which is going to have to, in this case, be X, because that's the, the um, variable we're changing, okay? And then come outside the brackets. Uh, no, close the brackets. Square up. And then uh, times RL, which is X in this case. Yeah? So if we, if we graph that, it should be on there somewhere. Why do I not understand that? Add a slide effect. <laughs> yeah. yeah? Interested in anything this side, but it shows there's a peak around where those two values are the same. Yeah, yeah, 
So if I change the value of the internal impedance of the source, which is effectively what R, little r is, that the peak always follows that. Yeah? So those two, but x and little r are always the same. Now, you, you'll, you'll always transfer your maximum power when, in this case, little r and rl are equal to each other. Yeah? When the impedance of the load is the same as the internal impedance of the source. It's, you don't try and match the load of the country's impedance to that of the national grid. That would be just being silly. But when you're talking about low power applications, it's important to match the impedance of your source with the load. If, you're, if, you, if you know anything about hi-fi, you'll know that speakers and amplifier outputs have impedance ratings on them. 4 ohm, 16 ohm, 8 ohm, right? That, because we're talking about impedance there, we're talking about AC signals, they're always quoted at um, 1,000 hertz, those values. They're what the impedance is at 1,000 hertz. So if you connect um, a 16-ohm speaker to an 8-ohm amplifier output, you won't transfer full power from the amplifier to the speaker. You'll be losing power. Same as if you connect the 4-ohm speaker to an 8-ohm output. It's done that way so that you connect an 8-ohm speaker to an 8-ohm output, and then you'll transfer full power. Okay, but it's important where signals are low, and you want to make sure of accuracy and transfer and everything across. Okay, but that I thought that um, software was quite useful for the graphs thing, um, and I'm, I've been using it quite a bit with some other classes that I've been doing. Um, you, if you sign up, you can save your graphs, but you're going to need to save them when you're actually online. Okay. So, maximum power transfer is when we match the impedance of the source with the impedance of the load. Okay? So, um, I'll just put a, an extra slide in there. What we're talking about here, in a full situation with an attenuator, there's our source. And that's got an impedance of 50 ohms. Okay. What we want, if this is our attenuator, and I'm going to draw it as a as a um, black box at the moment. Yeah. That's got an input impedance, ideally, of 50 ohms. Okay, we're going to connect that to a load of 50 ohms that will need to have an output impedance of 50 ohms, right? But this is where you need to make sure you fully understand this. That impedance there, this one, is measured. <laughs> I'm going to call that IB at IB when load is connected, i.e. if you wanted to measure that impedance and make sure that was 50 ohms, you need to connect the right resistor to match that 50 ohms to it, and then measure it. That's got to measure 50 ohms with the load connected, not open circuit. <coughs> Equally, this impedance we call that C and D, that is 
measure that C and D when source impedance, the correct source impedance, is connected. Okay, now we wouldn't connect an ohmmeter on there when we had a voltage source applied, but what we, if we wanted to check that impedance with a meter, we'd disconnect our load, but we'd have to put a 50 ohm resistor on the input terminals. It's got to measure 50 ohms with that ideal input impedance connected to it. Okay? So let's... That, the, the, the design of these is a little bit more complicated because of that requirement that that matches when the load's connected or when the source is connected to get the input and output impedances of um, correct for the circuit to get maximum power transfer. Do you all sort of understand that? Yeah? yeah? If you ha if I had an if I had an attenuator on the table here now, right, and I wanted to know what the um, input input let's say I had an attenuator on the table here now, and it had the output impedance marked on it, 50 ohms say, right, but somehow the input impedance had got scrubbed out because they aren't always the same. I'll come on to that in a minute. Okay, it could be different. If you want to check what that was. You'd need to connect a 50 ohm resistor to the output, the ideal load, and then you get an ohm meter, connect it to the two input terminals, and measure it. Okay? Vice versa, you could connect the ideal source and measure back in from the output terminals to check the output impedance. That's why you would need to know one of them for that method to work, because you've got to connect the ideal. Okay? Yeah?